Howdy of you delicious people. Honestly, beyond the very first actual season of this show, like, I would honestly just say a lot of this show has just been good enough kind of episodes. Really, now watching this episode, the sixth episode, I'm like, man, are they just, like, mer milking it out? Like, how, like... I bet what's going to happen is, one, we're either, we're either going to have a cliffhanger season, which is going to be like, hey, guys, you have to watch the next season to see everything all wrapped up by the following season. Because that's probably what they're going to do. Because if the other seasons before w wouldn't tell you that they cliffhanger it out just to wrap it up all in the very first season premiere... That's what I'm thinking is doing because or that's what I'm thinking they're going to do because for the life of me, I can't think that everything is just going to nice, neat little bow be wrapped up in the next two episodes. Like to me, I'm just like, there has to be something here where they're going to do a season finale where people are probably going to come back. But it's not going to really wrap up the season. And then they're going to have to go a whole nother season with what is actually really going to happen. Because it feels like Scarecrow, like, even into the sixth episode, is still getting his business up and running. So I'm like, holy crap, like, this is going to take for freaking ever. <laughs> this is going to take forever to get all put together and that's because they wasted too much time with Dick and Crane in those prison scenes. Like, man, you should have sped this up a little bit. Like, Jason Todd's origin story should have been, like, freaking episodes ago. Like, it should have been, like, the third or fourth episode. It should not have been the fifth. Good God, they just don't know really how to, like, time this all well. Because that feels obvious from other seasons where it's just like they don't know how to perfectly time an eight thing episode to where like there's a lot of mistakes that I think a season makes for Titans in all honesty. But man, just milking it out. Uh, so for this episode, we bizarrely have to now focus on the prequelness of Barbara Gordon in this episode. And then we also have to premiere a new villain that is to be from a Robin comic book. Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> like, we're gonna empty out the whole entire rogues gallery of everyone that has ever been in either a Batman story or a Batgirl story or a Robin story because none of these other characters have villains to fight against. Like, we've already kind of drained out a bulk of all the actual Titans villains. We've gone into doing Dr. Light. We've done Deathstroke. We've, uh... God, uh... Red Hood was a decent villain for Titans for a while in the comic books, but never in a show somewhere. But yeah, they've already kind of exhausted all of their, all of their things, all of their, like, man, I can't wait for them to, like, go and eventually do, try to do more DC shows. How impossible will that be because of this show? <laughs> like, like, hey guys, we want to go and we want to put a Batman show together. Well, maybe not because Titans kind of like exhausted like Scarecrow and Joker, everybody. <laughs> I guess we can't do a Batman show right now. Huh? Titans is kind of filling that void. Uh, that sucks. Well, <laughs> like, but I guess we get our Bruce Wayne fill from Titans forcibly, even though it doesn't really feel like that at all. Uh, so, could I also say one thing before we get rolling on to spoilers? I desperately want Beast Boy to no longer be a character on this show. I, I want him to die, in all honesty. I want him to kill, get killed off somewhere. Because, one, 
it would save this show money because CGI effects, special effects to go into this character, it would save this show money. It really would. And this character has been limping on for a number of episodes now. <laughs> this character can't still do anything. He can't still do any Like, all they do for this episode is they just give him a stretch of dialogue to have with Dick while Dick is actually doing a mission, and Beast Boy is just sitting on the bench for the 18th time. They even give Starfire and Superboy a side mission to do, which I don't even really understand what any of the point of what they were doing was to eventually just seemingly give more story to Black Star and for her to like eventually seemingly get cuddly close with Superboy, seemingly. But yeah, just like God, just the milk. Can Beast Boy turn into a cow so we can really have a visual representation of what's going on in this show right now? I need a full-on episode of Beast Boy where he turns into 12 different animals in one episode so that way they have to blow a ton of budget on special effects for Beast Boy so we can finally see Beast Boy in 12 different animals. Have him be a T-Rex, have him be a gorilla, have him be 12 different animals he's never been in one episode so I can finally say, wow, this character actually matters in this show. Because he's riding the bench this whole entire season. And everything is to just have him just tee it up for other characters to do their thing while he's sitting riding the pine on the bench. And also, still, where is that raven chick? Like, she's supposed to be probably on the very last episode. I'm here. Because I bet... In the very last episode of the season, all of a sudden, bizarrely, everyone's going to come out of the woodwork and they're going to come back, right? Because freaking, like, man, that big fat paycheck for that season finale, right? <laughs> Compared to any of the other episodes? I bet that's going to just spurl a lot of heroes out of the woodwork. Come on. Um, or I bet we're going to have, bizarrely, a whole entire episode... But where has Raven been this whole entire time? And everything will be perfectly timed and pieced out to, like, what is the next episode going to be? Hey, I'm going to have a whole entire episode of where has Raven been? <laughs> That'll be the next following episode to justify her eventually coming back onto the team. And then her being a part of the season finale. And they're just going to milk the crap out of this more. Because what what else are they going to do? Like, to just have this person pop in, just like, hey guys, I'm back. Uh, why? Because big cash out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Like, freaking. I was throughout this whole season collecting checks, but you just want to come in and one episode it and whatever. Um, but I'm sure there's probably some characters that probably wanted to just be like, yeah, I don't want to be involved in this season because of what all the new normal and stuff is going on. So no, like I'm not going to be involved. Because you can't just say that, or you could probably say that like there's some characters that are like, this is what I'm going to do in this season? That, no. Like, no. Like I'm not going to be in a show for 10 to 20 seconds when we got all of this going on. Like, no, I'm going to wait it out and frickin' I'll be back by probably the end of the season, or maybe the other season, when all this stuff just kind of calms down, because F that if I'm going to just be a person riding the bench and being involved in minuscule scenes, and because, or maybe they had nothing to write for Raven, who knows, but I'm also assuming that it seems like in this episode, we're going to have eventually the Red Hood eventually going on to his own thing. I think he's going to eventually just decide to be his own person. Maybe we're going to have a spinoff of the Red Hood. Probably not. Or the Red Hood is just going to consistently get tied into the Titans world. But obviously, it kind of feels like in this episode, we are to... 
develop a Tim Drake character, and we are to also have seemingly the Red Hood eventually deciding to go and uh, go into business for himself, which will be kind of an interesting way of maybe how this show is to eventually finish up uh, if we're going to get rid of, like, a bunch of characters towards the end of this. So, with that said, I think it's about that customary time to go into spoilers about this one. Kill off Beast Boy, please. <laughs> spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about the time again to spoil this episode. Let me pause here for a second so I can get a little bit of a reset. All right. Like I said, this is a Barbara Gordon heavy episode. <clears throat> and we also have a title that is to lead us to be like, what is Lady Vic? Hmm, I'm curious. Lady Vic is actually a villain of this episode. Uh, Lady Vic, a.k.a. Lady Victim. And she is actually a part of the Robin comic book world. Because eventually I had to Google who this character was because I'm like, I don't know. I'm not deep in the lore of the DC comic book thing because eventually I just gave that up. Because I'm like, you know what, I just want to stick to the Marvel stuff. Because at least a lot of the Marvel stuff, like, they're doing these, like, big, huge things of a show and like dc just kind of like tries to get there <laughs> but like gets there at a much more so slower pace uh but they try uh they try at least so going into this we have this woman lady vic who is let's get into her uh thing because i want to try to avoid going into the Barbara Gordon stuff so easily. Lady Vic is to uh, premiere in this episode by being at this diner. All of a sudden, she's going and almost going to get some, some tea. To all of a sudden here, off to the side, that there is these two cops that are going out of their way to confess their love to one another, or it seems like one police officer is, to where uh, the female police officer is to tell her partner, like, hey, man, you should probably knock it off with the whole, like, public displays of affection. Like, what if our superior was to come in? And all of a sudden, this guy is just like, well, what if he was to come in here? Like, I don't care. Then maybe I'll just retire. Like, uh, maybe I'll just, like, uh, I'll be a, a cop who does some rough justice <laughs> and retires because I'm a rough justice cop, whatever. So this guy is to talk about his whole entire, like, life planned out with this girl, how eventually their, uh, their plan is to get married and he ends up giving her a little tiki girl bobblehead instead of a wedding ring. To eventually tell them that I guess they're going on their honeymoon. They're going to go on their honeymoon soon. Probably to Hawaii I'm assessing because Tiki Girl. And basically this guy is mapping out their entire life together. And so Lady Vic who is to be the blonde haired girl is to hear all this. And so once these police officers are to get back into uh, their car, we have Lady Vic who ends up going and going after them and starting to stab the crap out of them and killing both of them. And then she ends up taking the Tiki bobblehead as, I guess, a trophy for this kill because we end up finding out later in this episode that Lady Vic was to eventually lose her, I guess, partner in crime, let's just say, towards the end of this episode in a flashback sequence. So Lady Vic, I guess, was to really just want to take out this couple because of her just really bitterness of the fact that she had lost her loved one. So it's time for these lovebirds to die. So... Let's get into the star 
<laughs> Let's get into the Starfire mission, because again, I'm avoiding the whole Barbara thing because that takes up a bulk of this episode, and I just don't really enjoy it. I don't. Uh, no offense to Barbara, uh, but there's something missing in this show, and it's blatantly obvious. So we'll get to that. So Starfire is to have a mission with Blackfire. Uh, and if I mispronounce that whenever she was to be in another episode, I apologize. Uh, so Starfire is to make her way into the... I'm assuming Wayne Manor? Are we in Wayne Manor still? I don't think we're in Titan's Tower, are we? No, I think we're still in Wayne Manor. So... Uh, Starfire is to make her way with Blackfire, and so Starfire is to basically build up her own sister because nobody really knows who this woman is. Like, I don't know who this woman is. We don't have a database for stuff. We don't know who anyone is. So Starfire has to mention how much of a threat that Blackfire is to everyone else. And it's like, yeah, right. Like, freaking Superboy is to be, like the only one that Blackfire is to consistently, like, chuck a cleaver at and, like, try to eventually just say that Superboy is to basically be her servant and that Beast Boy is to be Starfire's servant. And it's like, no, it doesn't work that way. Like, this is not our planet. So, eventually... Starfire and Superboy, because they need something to do, they are trying to figure out the whole Crane situation, and they're trying to figure out how they can eventually, like, try to minimize the delivery system of Crane. How, like, maybe they can go and find some doctor or some someone to eventually just kind of take out some of Crane's supplies. So is what I naturally assume is what going on, is going on here. All I hear is, like, all I really heard, like, really for this episode was, uh, like, Crane, like, and Doctor. And I'm like, okay, sure. Like, that must tie into that. So, eventually, Starfire is to go and uh, driving away with Superboy and Blackstar to this mission. And so, Starfire is to eventually find this doctor who has the exact same bomb like Hank did onto his chest. I'm like, man, these guys get really creative. Man, they just reuse sh from other episodes. No offense. Like, hey, man, freaking writing is hard. Plus, also, like, if something looked interesting on the other episode, might as well just redo it here. And plus, that whole bomb thing is a very complicated process. And so... We need Superboy to do something. So Starfire is to go find this doctor with a bomb in her chest. So that is to have Superboy come on out uh, to help uh, disarm this bomb like he tried to do on the other episode. And here's the thing. So he has to quickly put this whole thing together. Eventually, for it to still be, like, him taking some sweet time to have to put this thing together. So he kind of perfected it at the tail end of one episode, but then he has to, like, re-put it all together and see, like, how effective it's going to work consistently to where he can finally, like, I think in a quicker way, figure out how to best put this thing together. And so he disarms the bomb, and so they just leave. I'm like, wait a minute, isn't that bomb, like, screwed into this woman's chest? Like, shouldn't, <laughs> like, shouldn't we have a way of, like, taking this thing out? Like, but they just quickly leave. And we also had a moment where Beast Boy was talking with, uh, or Beast Boy, uh, Superboy was talking with, uh, almost sometimes I feel like Superboy and Beast Boy are one and the same. <laughs> they have equal in importance in this show, but... That's not their fault. Like, Superboy, I think, is a great character. 
but I don't think he's written all that great in the show. I've seen Young Justice, and Superboy is freaking amazing in that. When you get here, I'm just like, uh... <laughs> and I always have to complain about it, because it's always there. So... So now we really have Starfire... Oh, wait, let's go to the Superboy thing. So Superboy is talking to Blackfire while Starfire was in the uh, in the uh, thing going and checking on the doctor. And so Blackfire was talking about Krypton, and evidently she's experienced some things upon Krypton. And so Blackfire also is to realize that Superboy is Kryptonian, maybe because a big fat S of hope on his chest. Just a thought. Uh, so... The symbol of hope upon his chest, or a symbol of nope. Anyways, Black Star is to mention that, like, there's obviously some Kryptonian things going on with Superboy, but there's also something else. And Superboy is like, well, yeah, I do have some human DNA mixed inside of me. And so we really have to play up this whole Lex Luthor thing in this season uh, if we haven't played it up before. But man, are we really going at this? This whole Lex Luthor thing. So, like, because I guess we have to make, like, Superboy, like, this tech person. Because he's supposedly having the brains of Lex Luthor into his noggin. So, it's just, like, okay. So, I guess you get the genius of Lex Luthor, but the speed of Superman. So, I guess that should be, like, a deadly combo, right? So... Starfire is to eventually, uh, after that whole mission that they are to do, uh, uh, Starfire is eventually tells Superboy, it's like, hey, like, you know what, you technically have a mind of an evil genius, like, shouldn't you be able to figure some of this out? Like, shouldn't you be able to, like, figure out what our next move is? <laughs> and, like, Superboy's like, it doesn't work that way. But all of a sudden, we find out how it really works when Starfire is to go back to her car to find out that Black Star is to be gone to do a mission upon her own, which is to help us out with technically the story. But here's the thing. Like, the Black Star sequence doesn't even, like, it takes place off screen. <laughs> so Black Star just comes back and just says, hey, guys, plop, I solved all this for you. Be happy. And don't do anything else in this show. Maybe that'll lead you to do something else in the next episode. Because you guys have nothing better to do, right? So, now since we have seemingly nothing left in this show, let's go into the Barbara Gordon stuff. So, really we have supposedly six years ago... Robin had, or Nightwing had turned back to Robin because six years ago. And so Robin was trying to stop a thief that seemed to be like Catwoman. But then we end up finding out that it's actually Barbara Gordon instead. And it's just like, so are we going with the Batgirl costume or no? We end up finding out that it's a no. And I'm like, mother er. Because I'm, I'm like, wait a minute. So we have Barbara Gordon in previous time. And they completely skipped the whole Batgirl costume. Which got me really ticked off. Because I'm just like, so... Like, they tease the whole Batgirl thing. But they never actually do it. Because... Uh, cause I'm sure they just didn't want to actually, like, spend the money to slap a costume on somebody to, like, have to say, like, well, now we have to have Batgirl royalties. Uh, like, we don't want to pay that. So if we have to have just Barbara Gordon royalties, that's going to be good enough, right? And there's also the mentioning of, uh, Commissioner Gordon in this episode. I'm like... Yeah, you just gotta have to have that just reference going on there. You can't actually show the guy in past terms anyways. Like, you can't show Alfred, right? Because he's dead. Like, in other words, they didn't want to have to pay any royalties for Alfred either. God, is this show cheap. 
It really is at some points. It really just gets under my skin. And so going to further on moment. So Barbara and, and Dick are to eventually go on and steal a bunch of jewelry. And they're only doing it to kind of get back at Commissioner Gordon because he's kind of being light on certain duties. And Barbara is thinking if she goes and steals certain things, that'll make uh, Commissioner Gordon kind of tighten up on things where there's kind of lackadaisical security. So really we just have this moment where both Barbara and Dick are sharing a bed together and Dick is kind of playfully putting this jewelry on Barbara as a joke because he's to tell her it's like, yeah, I'm sure once you put this jewelry on, you're never going to want to take it off. And all of a sudden, eventually that leads them to both kiss and to both uh, seemingly share a bed together. But eventually we have this moment where Dick is all of a sudden to have a wound through his shoulder and now we go back to bizarrely present day, but we also still have to do flashbacks of the past somewhere in the show. So we find out from the last episode that Barbara Gordon, uh, with her sniper in her helicopter, had clipped uh, one of Dick's wings. Nightwing, get it? it there's a joke there. So... Uh, so Dick in present is to be laying on this bed with this gun wound in his shoulder. Like he couldn't call anybody. He couldn't just say like, hey guys, bullet in my shoulder. Hey, anybody want to come in and pick this whole thing out? But I guess the bullet all went all the way through. So like, hey, anybody want to just bandage my <laughs> freaking arm? Because <laughs> I only got one good hand here. And so for the rest of the episode in present day, we have Dick who has to play up the fact that his shoulder is hurt. And so there's this one part where Dick has to go through this whole ventilation shaft and he has to kind of like scoot with one hand because the shoulder is still hurt while he's talking to Beast Boy. And Beast Boy is talking about like, man, like Jason Todd, I never could have thought that Jason Todd could have been this, like this kind of person, like the guy that I worked with alongside with, I can't believe that he's just turned into the dark side. I can't believe it. And Dick is like, shut the f up, Beast Boy. You should have been dead years ago, <laughs> seasons ago. Really? C can, can you can you have come in here and like been a hamster or something and just been like crawling through here or a snake or something? Be crawling through this ventilation thing and easily could have gotten these uh, these audio things from this crime scene because we can't get visuals, so we have to get, like, audio crime scene things. Uh, because what is to happen is... Uh... Oh, Dick is to also get bandaged up by, uh, Starfire, and so Dick is to go on, uh, and and talk to Starfire, and Starfire is to mention to Dick, it's like, you really need to, like, square things up with Barbara. Like, you guys need to be on the same page, or otherwise you're going to get another bullet hole in you. So, Dick is to eventually go on and go to this crime scene, and really he can't get any much further than what is to be almost getting to the door. And now let me explain this crime scene that happened at this hospital. So, Jason was to now tell Scarecrow, like, hey man, like, let's go and bust some heads with this new drug. Let's go and, like, let's, like, mass produce this out. Just hire a bunch of thugs and give them this uh, drug and let's go out and just take some people down. And Scarecrow is just like, no, we're not quite ready yet. And if anything, like, learn your place, Padawan. So Scarecrow is to really tell Jason where his place is by 
having both Todd and Scarecrow go into this one medical room. And so all of a sudden, that's when Lady Vic in her actual outfit uh, is to premiere and just start murdering all these people in this doctor room. And then she is to head off, which that is the murder scene, which Dick was trying to get into, but he couldn't. So... Scarecrow is basically telling Jason, hey, like, you're not the only assassin in town. So if anything, like, if, like, if you're not going to learn where your place is in the world, which is not very high on things, someone else will teach you what place you are at. Like, basically threatening Jason to say it's like, hey, like, you're not the only game in town because I can find people like that uh, to eventually replace you. So, like, like, build this guy up, but then just quickly just break him down. Just quickly just say, like, hey, he's not really the villain of this show. Scarecrow is now, and he has been for this whole entire season, even though technically the main villain should have been Red Hood. It just switches into Scarecrow now as the main villain of the show. And I'm like, wow, that just really just deflates a character to just be like, hey, yeah, like, Red Hood, I guess, was the villain, of the, but not really. Like, Scarecrow was the whole time. Like, I guess, like, from episode one of season three, Scarecrow was really just the villain. Like, really just... Red Hood comes off as a puppet that Scarecrow had this whole entire time. And now Lady Vic is the new puppet. So now we push on to have Dick go and get these uh, audio files. And so now he comes back to the, uh, to the Batcave to eventually now have Beast Boy supposedly mimic the attacks that this girl is doing through this audio. And bizarrely, out of those movements, Dick is to figure out who this person is. I'm like, really? Like, man, I hope that every assassin doesn't do the exact same movement. <laughs> Like, all of a sudden, you can just kind of hear certain, like, knife slicings, and you can already just naturally assume, oh, it's this person. So, but we also have a moment where Dick is to see uh, Barbara, and Dick is to mention, it's like, hey, like, I want us to be on the same page. Like, I want us to, like, really work together here. And Barbara just really isn't budging. Bar Barbara just is like, you know what? Like, if you want, really want to help me, like, go home. Like, <laughs> so it's just like... Dick is really just trying to just be like, hey, like, I'm here for you. And Barbara's like, well, that's good and all, but I'm still, like... I'm still hurt about something. Like, I'm still, like... Uh, like, you're not really looking at me like uh, that you love me anymore. So, you know what? I'm, a, I'm just a woman scorned. So, go home, dick. Barbara is to eventually get a call from Bruce Wayne, of all people, through a secret phone. And so, uh, oh, we also get uh, Dick also mentioning Oracle in this episode. I'm like, yeah, freaking dust that bad boy off. But then all of a sudden, Oracle's like, no, I'm never going to dust that bad boy off ever again. I'm like, son of a bitch. I'm like, we can't eat, we can't get Batgirl. We can't get Oracle. We can't get anything of Barbara Gordon. She just has to be this cop. <laughs> what is the point of this character? Like, we don't get any of the good stuff. We don't get a, a, a flashback of Oracle. We don't get a, a Batgirl suit being put on in this episode. Why? Why? So, 
Barbara Gordon is to eventually go off and find where Bruce Wayne is and to supposedly go back to where it all began. So now we have to put a pen in this because Dick has figured out who uh, the Keeler is in this episode. So now let's go into flashbacks. So Barbara and Dick were going and doing another uh, thief thing to, I guess, prove to her father that her father still sucks at being a police officer. Like, you know what? Like, I like I just kind of just don't get Barbara. <laughs> like, she just would rather be a thief than be Batgirl. I, uh, I, I just... What is she even going to do with any of this stuff? Just return it back the next day? Just to, like... She just really wants to get back at her father. Like, she's really just, like creating more work for her dad, for her dad to never be home, for, for really, it just doesn't make sense what she's really doing, but whatever. So, Dick and Barbara are to be in flashback form, going and being thieves, and they end up mixing it up with Lady Vic and her, I'm assuming, probably boyfriend, and eventually this is all to lead to, of course, Lady Vic's partner in crime getting killed. And eventually Lady Vic is to get out of here. And, like, this doesn't lead in uh, Barbara getting uh, handicapped or whatever. Because eventually, I'm sure, they'll probably get to the killing joke moment. Maybe somewhere in here. Probably not, because that's a real brutal story. And plus, that just feels like something that has already been done in a number of other things. So, I wouldn't go that route. Uh, like, they could probably reference it, but I wouldn't go there. That just seems too... That seems too dark of a story, I think. But who knows? Maybe Titans will cover it. Because maybe they'll finally have Joker as a villain in one of these seasons. But no, wait, they can't. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because in this episode, they confirm... That Batman has killed the Joker. And so Beast Boy is to be concerned that eventually Dick is eventually going to kill Jason. Or a number of Titans are technically concerned that eventually Dick is eventually going to kill Jason. Because it's kind of like one and the same. But yeah, so... Building up this story for no reason. So, pushing on. So, Barbara Gordon is to go off and uh, try to get to Bruce, but it seems that she's to hear Bruce off into the distance. And it's just a re-recording of what he had said previously. So, Barbara is to realize that she is in a trap, that she didn't call anybody to say, like, hey, you want to follow me down this one little part of road because maybe I'm going to get jumped by someone because it's bound to happen. It's Barbara Gordon. She should have backup, but that I guess that's just me. And plus, also, she got sucked in because Bruce wanted to talk. So Barbara is to make her way here to eventually get surprised by Lady Vic. But here's also the prize the, the surprise also that Barbara Gordon freaking comes prepared. Like all of a sudden we end up seeing that Barbara is to have these like sticks and also have like guns blazing and freaking like Lady Vic is no match for Barbara Gordon. I'm like, yeah, woohoo! Like if we get no Batgirl and no Oracle, at least we get this. At least we get this one spot with even like Barbara Gordon in a wheelchair. She's such a badass. And like that's the one thing that I could like about this episode. One sliver of something that I can enjoy about this episode. And that is it right there. The cool moment where we have someone in a wheelchair still kicking an assassin's butt. And bizarrely, we also have Lady Vic who ends up taking a photo shot of Barbara's eyes for some reason, which I don't know how exactly that led. Uh, but 
or led to, but eventually Lady Vic is to give the picture to Scarecrow about like, hey, maybe I should just uh, change the way I do things. Ha ha ha, Lady Vic. Uh, yeah, you should really just rechange your name also. Your name sounds stupid. So, uh, really what is to just kind of culminate this whole episode is eventually Jason is to go out and go on a shooting spree or a killing spree with a bunch of men. And coincidentally, Jason Todd being a villain will probably lead to Tim Drake becoming Robin in this show. Oh, how great it is to know that this restaurante guy is eventually going to be Tim Drake. God, uh, it's just so I'm I have this feeling that Bruce Wayne is probably going to come to this restaurant and probably just say, oh, hey, kid, like, it seems that uh, your parents are killed. Like, well, like, I have a mansion just like open for you if you want that probably has some Titans in it, maybe. But hey, like you can become my Robin and I can train you for X amount of years until you become the Robin that I need you to be. Because I'm assuming that they're not... Like, I think there's going to be, like, some time period lapse between, like, the next season and this season. So that'll probably be enough time to probably train Tim Drake Robin. They're probably going to tease it by the end of this season. But then eventually in the next season, all of a sudden it'll be Tim Drake Robin in costume. And whatever, and that'll be the ooh ah surprise in the next season, so we can get people some interest in wanting to invest in the next following season. Because I'm assuming that's what the finale is for to get Bruce Wayne to eventually come back, just be like, hey, like Tim Drake, looks like you're eventually gonna be a Robin, right? <laughs> How about you also be a Batman Beyond somewhere down the line in the distant future when eventually Terry McGinnis is gonna be just. A thing that we have to forget about but eventually will probably be Batman Beyond yet again because freaking Tim Drake eh, Tim Drake so yeah so Jason Todd is to have his goons run through this restaurant kill a bunch of Tim Drake's people and that's how we kind of end this episode and I'm just like okay teasing the whole Tim Drake thing that sounds great but yeah, like that's really, I think, a bulk of this episode. I think I covered most of it, but there's probably a, a huge thing that I feel like I let slipped by because there's a lot of stuff going on in this episode. Uh, plus, really, I kind of like paraphrased a lot of the season. I apologize, but otherwise, I think it's about that time to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. I'm sorry how long this took, too. Bye, everybody.